Welcome to the Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. This is Gabriel Lazar, and I am joined by my co-host, a freshly healed Sharon Daphna. We are broadcasting live, as usual, from the lush green mountains of Southern California, where the media can lie about the drought all they want, but Mother Nature always tells the truth. <laughs> well, putting 3,000 organites in a 500-mile stretch just induces the need for them to have to lie more. Speaking of which, Team Kembo just had a big anniversary yesterday. We celebrated two years since our very first batch of organite. And what a fantastic two years it's been. Yes, it's and it's been a wild ride. So we're going to talk all about it today. And I just want to say I'm so happy to be back on the air. I'm so happy that American Freedom Radio got its equipment problems resolved. And thank you for all the donations, everybody. And a special shout out to our etheric friend, AJ Powell, in Northern California, who donated for the new board. And AJ is known as NorCal Weather Warrior on Tumblr. So you can check out the amazing work that she's doing up in Stockton, California to clean the sky and bring back rain. We've got a great team assembled here in California. It's an unorganized <laughs> right. network. Has to be unorganized. That's right. That prevents it from being infiltrated and co-opted, sabotaged. This kind of stuff happens to all sorts of people, especially those who work in free energy. So it's absolutely essential that it remains unorganized. Organ the organ energy is a free energy. It's not electricity, so it's not free energy for your home, but it is, I think, a gateway towards learning other free energies and towards humanity accepting the idea of free energy. So uh, to catch you up on what we're doing for the past two years, Gabe and I have been making Organite, Orgone Energy devices, and distributing them throughout California and ending the drought. And it's not just us. We've got our NorCal Weather Warrior and other friends throughout the state that are doing this work, and it's amazing. So we've seen great changes through doing this work, and uh, we're just so happy to be able to share this. We've seen incredible changes, and it's the, the key is that this is happening all over the planet. This is not just localized in one area. It is worldwide. If you go to any search engine or YouTube and type in Organite, you'll get videos from every continent. Well, maybe not in Antarctica. I don't know if there are too many people gifting there, but uh, but there should be. Penguin gifters. Yeah. And God bless them too. <laughs> but yes, and we've got Organite uh, worldwide now, Organize Africa with George Richel, who I, I hope we can get on our show one of these days. He's one of the world's most prolific organ. I'd gifters. say he is the most prolific. Yeah. I, I'd, we're talking about tens of thousands of pieces. It's, it's absolutely remarkable. Well, the guy has made it rain in parts of Africa that hadn't seen rain in decades. Yeah, the Namib Desert in, in Namibia. I mean, it, it's it's incredible. What, what this guy has done in the southern part of Africa. And he's spread up into Central Africa as well by now. So, so Gabe and I got started with Organite back in uh, April. April 19th of 2014 was our first batch. So yesterday was our official two-year anniversary. And prior to that, we had just had the chemtrail blues. We had been depressed. The skies were a nightmare in Los Angeles, just a disaster. Day after day, crisscrossing lines. We were lucky to have one blue sky a month in Los Angeles, you yeah. know, the, where it's supposed to be sunny and blue skies most of the time. <laughs> so we were pretty depressed and we were sick. I was really sick from it. And uh, I was getting allergies, throat, uh, you know, sore throat all the time. Uh, I was exhausted. I, there was no reason for these problems except that I was inhaling, you know, massive amounts of aluminum, barium, and strontium every day, as <laughs> well as true. everyone around me. So yeah, that's right. And the thing with us was, you know, you can you can choose to avoid GMO food, you can refuse vaccines, you can get the fluoride out of your water. It's a pain, but it's but it's doable. But there's we were we were in such a state of despair at this time because it seemed like there was nothing we could do about the chemtrail spraying because we have to breathe. What are we going to do about this? It's just, <laughs> we, we felt like we didn't have any options. Well, yeah, I started the blog uh, somewhere under the Kembo. It's the Kembo.tumblr.com. I started that blog in March of 2013 after a horrible chemtrail day at work. And it, I was working as a background actor, an extra. Now they call them background actors. It sounds more important, but I was an <laughs> extra on a cop show that I used to play cops and detectives a lot. And 
they kept us outdoors. So we were outdoors under this horrific chemtrail sky and all the extras in holding were just passed out on themselves. And all of the crew members on the show were just angry and, and agitated. It was a terrible scene and the sky was a nightmare. And I was trying to tell people about it and they were just saying, oh, those are just contrails. And finally, by the <laughs> extras are not the smartest batch of people in case you haven't figured it out. Okay, but but to be fair, a lot of the extras are very aware of these kinds of issues. Yeah, that's They true. got a lot of time on their hands to look at their iPhones and read up on these things. So, and watch YouTube videos. So, anyway, it was it was a terrible terrible day, and by the end of the day, I just complained about it with an earshot of the PA and she heard me and thought I was complaining about the work conditions in the show. And actually, I mean, the work conditions were pretty bad that we have to be kept out under the chemtrail sky, getting sick and passing out. Yeah. But she <laughs> she almost had me fired over it. So it was pretty brutal. I explained myself. She didn't understand what I was talking about. I said, look at the sky. She looked. She looked back at me like, uh, like I was crazy. Anyway, I did get through that day. I didn't get fired. I came home. <laughs> By the time I was driving home, they had turned on the harp array, which so they'll spray all day and then hit the harp. And then uh, I was seeing just the ripples and a Kembo, and it was the most horrific sky. And I'm driving down Franklin, uh, you know, it's past all the hipster places across from the Scientology building. And I'm looking at all these people at La Poubelle and, and whatever they, the places. Birds yeah. and the bourgeois pig. All and, that's, yeah. and I'm looking at these people out there having their, their beer and their, their snacks and n completely oblivious to the sky. And I was so upset. So I came home and I thought... I got to do something. I'm starting a blog at the very least. No one's listening to me. I can't explain it to my coworkers. None of these hipsters are going to understand. No one cares. So I started a blog. I think you tried WordPress at first and that just, that wasn't coming together. It's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. So you went on Tumblr and you started this blog. And uh, so for the first year of that blog's existence, it was just, just a series of pictures of each day of you were just reporting on what was happening that day. Yeah, it was totally depressing. Every day was just awful chemtrails day after day after day. If we had a clear day, it was an anomaly. And I also would post videos like documentaries. What in the world are they spraying? Why in the world are they spraying the Michael Murphy films? I posted all kinds of information links to other websites. So there was basically an information site that just explained yeah. chemtrails. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the summer of that year, 2013, is when we first started really kind of inquisitively poking around into the subject of Organite. That's when it happened. And I was so upset. So I started looking up, how do you stop chemtrails, right? Because you can't, you can't tell Barbara Boxer and Diane Feinstein because you'll get this nonsense response. Like I got complete <laughs> nonsense responses from the senators. So... I thought, well, what can we do? So I typed literally how to stop chemtrails in YouTube. And I got videos <laughs> about Organite. And I looked and I thought, yeah, right. These little plastic blocks of, you know, metal and crystals and resin. How is that going to do anything? Yeah. How is that going to defeat a multi-billion dollar operation that's, that's so massive and widespread? How can that possibly make a dent in it was what you were thinking. And it's what I was thinking, too. Right. And then we were playing water badminton one day in the pool with our friends in Studio City. And as usual, the sky was a mess when we got up in the morning. And I always was wary about playing sports under that sky ever since I learned that when I would jog or hike under the chemtrail sky, I'd get sick. Yeah. But we went anyway. And because I didn't want to miss a chance because it was my favorite sport. And it was a lot of fun. Mine too. So, <laughs> But something happened that day. That was at the, the end of August, I believe, last day of August, it was very profound what happened. Well, yeah, we saw something that matched what we had seen on YouTube when we look up Chembuster videos. So the Chembuster is a design by Don Croft, which is modeled after Wilhelm Reich, uh, Cloudbuster. And this is a device that cleans chemtrails out of the sky using six copper pipes, each containing a double terminated quartz crystal in an organite base. So, and it's very big. They're about six feet tall. And so we'd see these videos on YouTube and it would make literally a blue hole in the sky. <laughs> and there were, uh, in some of the videos, little points, like six points of cloud where the pipes were. In the middle of the blue sky that it was, that it was clearing. And this is a base of crystal, metal, and resin. And in addition to that, there's 
the the six solid quartz crystals and the copper pipes coming out of that base. Yeah, it's massive, and it's designed to clean about seventy five miles of chemtrails. So we looks were... like a Gatling gun for all you Civil War buffs. Out there. Yeah, that's what one of the shills on Tumblr said. I said aiming the chem buster <laughs> to the north to the northwest, and he typed on there aiming my Gatling gun at the neighbor's house. Anyway, he, it was probably just a computer program doing it. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> that you know that's all up to speculation. But nonetheless, we saw in the sky it was covered in these chemtrail clouds and then i took a picture of that and then i took another picture and it was really when i came home and examined the pictures that i really saw what was happening there was literally a deep blue sky and a big open round hole in the clouds with six points of cloud in the middle and we looked at this and we were astounded because it matched exactly what we saw online. So this is, this began the journey. Oh my God, it works. (laughs) Well, yeah. So we wanted to try it out and it was the first visual confirmation that, wow, we may actually have a solution here. So if you're looking at, there's a forum online that has that picture on it. And a lot of people are saying, how could we be doing that? They don't believe it. We didn't do that. I just want to put that out there for all of those people who are saying that there's no way Team Kembo could have done that. No, wasn't Team, us. Team Kembo didn't do that. We just saw it, and we we're... were just exercising. We just <laughs> we just happened to see it, and yeah, that that was our first big clue about this. But the funny thing was, we didn't know about organite, which were the small pieces. Well, that we you did. Could... We just didn't think they worked. Yeah, it it was one of those things where. We, it was just so daunting to have to to feel like we have to build this enormous. It's this literally six feet tall, and these huge pipes coming out of it, and it's just it seemed so daunting to us that you know months went by and we 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 never made it. But uh, well, we started gathering the supplies for the small ones. Well, we bought double terminated quartz crystals, or you know, we tried our best to buy everything we needed. We were starting starting to buy, but it really was like Gabe said, just so daunting. So. We started to gather some things for it, and then we realized, how in the world are we going to build this thing? And then I saw a video online, and it was from Radio Mysterium. And this video, you can see it on my website. I put a link to it under the Organite tab of thekembo.com. So this Radio Mysterium video explained how to make small organites and showed how it was working over the guy's house in portland oregon and they really need it up there they've got horrible chemtrails up in the northwest so i was watching this video and we realized hey we can make these little guys and see how it works and so it it literally took us from august of 2013 till april of 2014 before we finally did it that's right but when we did oh man (laughs) the results were unbelievable we gathered everything we needed. We got our little silicone molds. We got them in the ziggurat shape, which is a flat top pyramid. And we had our our crystals and we got some brass shavings from the local locksmith for free. And, uh, and we got some just standard, I think 18 gauge copper coil from home Depot. And we just, you know, cut off little segments of it, wrapped it around a pencil, made a little coil shape And uh, we figure, what have we got to lose? Let's try it. It it didn't cost that much. So I was like, why not? It was a bad spray day that day. And we assembled all of our ingredients, got the smallest pack of resin that we could. And we, we just started mixing it together, followed the instructions and poured the resin. And it didn't take long before we saw something that changed our lives forever well it took about 15 minutes before the sky started clearing and by the end of that day we had cleared about a mile radius like all the way up from where we were down by melrose all the way up to hollywood boulevard it was pretty astounding and so we thought that we would like to continue doing this (laughs) so we did so um that was that was amazing and uh, that was april 19th 2014 and i actually just did a talk on this at the 5d event and the origins of our work and uh, the true nature of weather warfare which that's it's a huge thing to get into which is why we pretty much have a whole show blog and website dedicated to that with other you know issues that are related but what we found was an unbelievable effect in sky cleaning. And at this time, we still didn't completely understand it. I mean, the video referenced Ken Rolla, who was the electrical engineer who can explain this better than anyone because he can explain how these scalar waves function. And the organite creates what is known as scalar waves or a scalar wave vortex, which is the same thing as orgone energy. It's the physics term. 
So we, we learned how it worked. It took us a long time before we fully comprehended it. Anyway, we made the, the first batch of, I think six, but it might've just been five actually on the first batch. I can't, I can't remember if it was five or six. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it, it was five. Cause I actually looked at the picture and one of the cavities didn't have one. So it's five. Then we made another half dozen later in the week. And by the end of the week, I woke up to a cloudy sky, like not a chemtrail sky, but springtime rain clouds. Real clouds. And it was very, very beautiful. And I it, I went into work that day and I watched it all day. I had this big west facing window and I looked at the beautiful clouds, but I saw something else happening. By mid-afternoon, they had sprayed the bejesus out of the sky and undid our work. Is that a scientific term? Yes, bejesus. <laughs> They, they sprayed so much. So by afternoon and by the end of the day, they had taken the nice puffy clouds and flattened them. And now later I know, I didn't know this at the time, now I know that the positive ionization that is used in geoengineering is what causes the clouds to flatten. That's right. But we didn't know this, we at, didn't the know that at the this, time. These were these were the early stages of our experimentation. And, and we had some other interesting things happen. There was that time we were doing our laundry and we had lenticular clouds form over the flats well, of Hollywood. And that, that was the next day. And that's what I'm getting to is is that day that that we saw those nice clouds in the morning and then they were all flattened by evening. I was so upset. I came home from work. I was so upset that they destroyed it because we woke up to not only clouds, but a 50% chance of rain, something I hadn't seen in, in I don't know how long. And because they've been suppressing the rain forever with the chemtrails. Yep. So I came home. I was so sad. I prayed and prayed and prayed outdoors with the organites on the back patio. I prayed and I cried and my tears fell on the organites and I it was very emotional. And I just prayed for rain. And within a couple of hours, the rain actually started. We heard the drops and I couldn't believe it. It started to actually rain. It was it was unbelievable. And that is testament also <laughs> to the intention. It's not just about making the organite, but those deep prayers that it was very, very intense. That is part of it. There is a, a spiritual element to this work. And the, the scientific part too, there is there is also an element of one's intention. And we'll be talking about that on and off throughout the show because it, it is a huge part. And uh, <laughs> yeah, when we brought that rain, it, it, was, it was something else because like you said, they had been suppressing it for some time and to, f to finally feel that we, that we have power again, that we can affect change in something that seemed completely impossible just even weeks prior. Well, this is the science of spirituality. And what we're learning here, and this is what Wilhelm Reich discovered himself, is that orgone energy is God as Ken Rolla called it, universal God consciousness, and other cultures have called it chi or prana. What we have is our life force energy and the energy of the universe. This is God consciousness. And the scientific term for it is scalar energy or scalar waves. And Wilhelm Reich called it orgone energy when he first measured it scientifically. So what we have is emerging of science and spiritual thought and what we're realizing, and this is the huge part, is that our energy from our hearts, our own thoughts, our own prayers, literally shape the world around us. And they do this not just, it's not just hypothetical. We actually have a quantum field that our energy extends around our bodies and affects the quantum field. So we can literally shape our reality with our very thoughts. So this was huge. So we have an energy device that does the work, but our own intentions and prayers actually make a difference. That night it rained. It was a celebration. It was amazing. The next morning we woke up to a sky I hadn't seen. I hadn't seen a sky like this in so long. It was very emotional. It was deep blue. It had big puffy cumulus clouds, no chemtrails at all. And in fact, if you go to my blog, thekembo.tumblr.com, check the archive and go back to April of 2014 if you want to see the early days. Uh, it's It was really amazing. And then that day, they harped the heck out of us to undo all of that. Sprayed and sprayed to undo the beautiful clouds, hit it with harp. But 
as further testament to the working of orgone energy, by the end of the day, as Gabe had mentioned, lenticular clouds formed over our house. That's right. And lenticular clouds typically form over mountains. They are caused by the presence of these scalar waves. They do form naturally, but keep in mind, we were living in the flatlands of Hollywood. There were no mountains around. No. And the lenticular cloud, if you don't know, it's shaped like a UFO, kind of like a rounded cloud. And the scalar wave is spiraling. And so it, it spirals the uh, the energy and it'll gather up all those chemtrail toxins. Sometimes you'll see corkscrew shapes. And in very extreme circumstances like this, you will see these rounded clouds. So over mountains, you'll see them naturally. And over our house in Hollywood, that was very unusual. That it certainly was. And by the way, we have a photo gallery on our website, thekembo.com. If you go to that, we have some photos of those early lenticular clouds, the big hole that someone else's chembuster was making in the sky. We have a bunch of photos of some strange stuff in the sky and people should understand what they're seeing and not just think that it's all being done to us and that we're victims. And, you know, we, we offer explanations and there is scientific backing to this about what these formations are and what orgone energy what its role is in shaping what we are seeing in the atmosphere. Oh, and hey, I want to give a shout out also to Mystic Wanderer right now from Revolution Radio, because it's her forum, actually, that has that picture. That's right. And she's uh, been a great supporter of our work and has gotten uh, gotten me a bunch of interviews to explain it. And this is her forum online that it talks all about what we do and how Organite works. And there's a big discussion on there. So yeah, that wasn't our work. So if people want to say there's no way we did that, no, there is no way we did it because we didn't make Organite good at that time. Anyway, <laughs> because we didn't do it. <laughs> so thank you, Mystic Wanderer, for everything you've done yes, for us you. as well. And before I forget, I sh should have included this earlier, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our fan Cindy in New York for her fanmanship and support. We very much appreciate it. Thank you, Cindy, so much. Cindy is going to be gifting a bunch of Obelixes which I'm making for her. The Obelix is another Orgone device, which we started making pretty soon after we started making Organite. Yep. And it's very, very useful. I want to talk about the Obelix just briefly. Um, on my site, thekembo.com, under Organite, you'll see links. And I link to projectobelix.org. And this is an open source invention where anyone could just watch the videos and learn how to make it. And uh, it's, it's not that hard to make. It's easier than Organite, although it, it's a little bit, tricky sometimes because you have to use gold foil so that can be a little tough yeah um, it, it can be messy too but for people who are afraid of resin or you just don't want to work with it or or you have some some kind of blockage to working with resin this is perfect for you because this does not utilize resin at all it is an excellent sky cleaner and in the days before we had our chembuster that we have now i I definitely feel that we <laughs> achieved some great results in the sky with our little mini obelixes that we were crafting. Yeah, the obelix is a quartz crystal, and you can use any kind of quartz, amethyst, citrine, smoky quartz, or clear quartz, and you, you wrap it in gold foil. So we use gold leaf, and this is the, the kind that they use in baking, like to put gold foil on cakes. On cakes right. and stuff, yeah. So you, you wrap it in gold leaf, which is, that's the difficult part, and that stuff's expensive, but that's the most expensive part. Then comes the silver wire. That's the next most expensive part. And other than that, the wires are not as, as much. So you'll wrap it in gold leaf, then silver wire, copper wire, then aluminum, then iron in that order. And if you want to know more about it, please go to my website and click on projectobelix.org. And also you can look at the YouTube and Vimeo pages of the inventor, whose name is Aya which is a very interesting name because that <laughs> is the word that Wilhelm Reich used for the UFOs that he saw during his cloud busting operations. It means primordial. In 1955, mind you. <laughs> right. It means primordial energy. So check that out for sure. Yeah. We have some great information about this wonderful device. And yeah, it's the wires are covering the bottom third or so of the crystal. And you stick it in like a potted plant, for example, if it can't stand on its own. And you aim the big face into the sun and it's... 
it's absolutely amazing what what this device does. And uh, yeah, so these were parts of our early results working with Orgone devices. And uh, you had an interesting experience in at your workplace yeah. Yeah. When, once you got your gallery job. Well, I had my gallery job at that time, and and um, when we started doing this, and that was what was paying for for me to do this. I worked at an art gallery in LA, very very high end, hoity toity art gallery. They catered to all sorts of uh, rich Illuminati types. And I worked in the financial office. So, you know, it's kind of, it, it should have so been. So you knew how, just how hoity toity I knew it was. just, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, I feel like it should have been a nicer job than it was. I wish it was, but there was just, it, there was too much dysfunctionalism amongst the owners and the people working there. Anyway, I had a boss that was a nightmare and I'm sorry if she's listening to me right now. I doubt she is because I highly doubt she's it. probably listening to Fox news right now. But, um, anyway, she was a nightmare and she didn't mean it. I know she didn't mean it, but she treated me really badly. I know she, she thought she treated me well, but she didn't. And she was so on edge all the time and for a variety of reasons, and I'm not going to disclose her personal problems, but I brought in one of the first organites that we made, which was a rose quartz organite with brass shavings and a beautiful rose quartz, which is the stone of love. I'm not much of a new ager. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. But And neither am I, for the record. <laughs> right. But the rose quartz is a lovely stone and it is associated with love. And I put this pyramid in the office on my desk and she didn't know it was there. And I saw her behavior change. She was so calm. She was so nice. The cussing stopped temporarily and <laughs> reduced it's reduced but it was like i could see the i could see how it was working on her because organite isn't just a sky cleaner what it does is it neutralizes dangerous energies which are a lot of what's making us crazy so a lot of what's going on in our world is emf which is not just disrupting our cellular communication in our bodies but it's it's mind control it really is affecting everyone well that and, office was an emf haven if i remember correctly. it was it was awful <laughs> and so it, we were bathed in this toxic EMF all the time and bringing in the organite actually really calmed her down. It changed the atmosphere in there, made it nicer for a while. I had to keep bringing in more and more though, because as people get used to it and as the atmosphere gets used to it, you'll need an orgo and rush to bring the same effects. So. Yeah. Cause it'll just kind of go back to the way it was gradually. And I mean, it does neutralize. So we're always neutralizing, but Mm -hmm. If you want to see more and more effect, you kind of have to have more and more orgone and overpower the dangerous energy. Yeah, you just have so, to build it up and up. That's it, just how it is. Anyway, my my boss uh, calmed down quite a bit. And then uh, above her were the owners. And one of them I really didn't know very well. But the other one would come around a lot. And he literally thought I was a complete nutcase because I'd put the organites outside, especially, you know, on bad chemtrail days. And one day I put out the organites in a in a... Uh, configuration and I made a quartz medicine wheel and he asked me wh what planet I was from because he thought I was trying to contact my my home planet which which made, you were w yeah but that's shh, don't sorry, tell anyone sorry that. Um, my fault but anyway that was can, very can we delete that portion please <laughs> yeah. so anyway he thought I was crazy uh, my boss who who I worked directly under that who didn't treat me that well uh, like I said, I don't think she meant to treat me that badly. I think she was under some bad influences that, you know, a lot of people are bad drugs, uh, bad energy, et cetera. And, uh, so she actually thought they were quite beautiful, which was, which was nice. Anyway, uh, most of my coworkers thought I was a complete nut job. Well, and that's, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Most of my coworkers thought I was crazy and wouldn't have anything to do with me. Uh, they just wanted to talk about you know, Game of Thrones and, and iPhones and shopping at the mall. And flaming Hot Cheetos. No, no, they weren't Flaming Hot people. They were Ruffles people. Oh, okay. sorry. It, it's Excuse a high-end gallery, Gabe. Sour cream and onion or sea salt and vinegar? I think there was some of that going around. Okay. But, but this is a high-end gallery, no no Flaming Hots. Of course. Uh, uh, more more refined GMOs in this place. Ah, I, I see. That, that's good. Anyway, I, I had maybe a, a couple of coworkers who didn't think I was crazy and actually were interested in the organite and, and obtained some for their homes and friends. And particularly the interns were interested in listening to me point at the sky and go on and on. And one of my coworkers there eventually told me when, when the gallery went green and started paying for carbon credits and I started talking about Agenda 21, she said, maybe 
maybe this isn't the maybe this isn't the job for you. Maybe there's another job out there for you. Uh, <laughs> which, you, ma'am, win a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it, and then it was soon after that that I actually left and started doing lectures and and public talks and doing planetary healing full time. Oh yeah, and that's when we started our gifting, which was a huge part of of making organite because you know you could, you can make organite and you can sell it to to fund your operations. But there is nothing like going around in nature and finding the sources of death energy, which is exactly what it is, which is mostly cell phone towers. And to go around and we and take tactical, functional organite pieces that don't need to look pretty, they just function. And you put that near the tower and that negates all of that toxic energy. By nature, do you also mean cities? I do. But nature is, is a more broad term, is just the great outdoors, whether okay. it's urbanized or not. Because I know somebody who thinks that birds' nests are unnatural because birds built them. You know, so is that part, as a bird's nest part of nature? Well, technically, I, well, I think George Carlin used to say that everything is natural. So it's not just, natural. It's not just owls and trees. It's whoopee cushions, oil slicks, you know, monkey feces, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so... We started gifting Organite first in LA before we went out into nature. And we did it by bike. And we, uh, Gabe and I are avid, uh, well, now we live in, in the woods and we don't bike so much, but we were urban bicyclists, avid cyclists, public transportation people. We are not a bunch of communists, Agenda 21 liberals, but we do see the benefit in public transportation and bicycling. But we're so, also not a bunch of machine gun toting rednecks right. that like to ride around in pickup trucks everywhere and, you know, shoot things just for the sake of it. There's a happy medium. And I, I like to think that that's where, where we reside. So we would go on our bikes and I loved going into the worst parts of LA. We took the train down into South LA. We'd take the blue line down with our bikes, go biking around. We biked through South LA, Compton, Southgate, uh, Paramount, Paramount, Linwood. We went to all the Lakewood, all the, all the great places, and Long Beach. And some of these places are better than others, and some are safer than others. And we distributed hundreds of organite devices to the cell towers just far and wide, all over LA, mostly by bike, which was my passion. So <laughs> I enjoyed that. And it was crazy the amount of cell towers that we would see in these low-income neighborhoods, uh, to use the euphemism. <laughs> but it was it was absolutely astounding just just the sheer concentration of them, and also where they were placed. We would see cell phone towers in clusters of three right by schools. We would see panels on top of hospital buildings, churches, churches, people trying to recuperate from diseases and worship the creator. Yes. <laughs> are being given a cancer source. <laughs> right. So it was, it was pretty astounding. The more that we delved into it, the more we saw all these harmful sources of energy. And so the organite, it cleans the sky, it neutralizes energy. And, and just to be clear, the geoengineering is is highly impacted by the cell tower arrays. So if you think it's just harp, it's not just harp. It's not. It, and if you think it's just the trails themselves and you ignore the frequencies, that's only part of the picture. It's it these trails and anything else that's up there, these are all working with the frequencies. They wouldn't be able to stick like that if not for the frequencies. And when we neutralize, when we neutralize dangerous EMF, they literally can't spray. So we would see these wonderful changes happen while gifting. And we've gifted all over LA. We gifted the entire San Fernando Valley. Uh, My we, home. Right. And Gabe knew everywhere to go. <laughs> and so we, we took care of just tons of places in LA and we'd see amazing changes while doing it. We'd see the sky clean up before our eyes. Often we would induce rainfalls. The more we distributed, the more likely we would induce a rain. And it was a beautiful, beautiful experience in knowing that we're helping people, especially who don't even know they're being helped. So that's uh, right. And and it's and it still is. And we just at that at those early stages, we had to just concentrate in individual areas and then just kind of grid and just spread out. As, as we took care of one area, we, we took care of another by it. And then eventually we got to a point where we had to go out of L.A. and do 
do some some tower busting in other parts of the state. But uh, as far as L.A. is concerned, yeah, we were on our bikes and we would just go around just wh- wherever we thought felt we needed to be. And that's that's another part of this whole adventure is is the aspect of hunches and intuition, because sometimes you just feel that you that there's going to be a tower here or you need to be over there. And we would just go with that with those instincts and more often than not, we'd we'd see the cell phone tower, or or we'd feel it. Some Sharon can often feel their presence, and uh, you know, a lot of times they're pathetically disguised as trees, and we learn to identify which <laughs> we we learn to spot them out out of the, the many different ways that they are hidden. They're often on top of buildings, just as single panels, and sometimes on telephone poles. So we learned pretty quickly how to distinguish these panels and arrays that we saw. Well, if you want to gift Organite, I have a video on how to make simple little Organite pieces that you can watch on my site, thekembo.com. We also started offering, finally, it took us forever to get this going. I, I don't know why, but we finally have bulk bulk orders of Organite available at our shop. So if you don't want to deal with all the mess and the hassle and, you know, it, it's, it's hard working with resin and you need a respirator and all that. So if you don't want to deal with all that, the more you buy, the cheaper they are. So we have them at the cheapest right now is a batch of 20. Uh, they end up being $7 and 50 cents each. And, and we can do it even cheaper than that. Cause the main thing is we just want them out there. So that's right. If you want to gift, you know, get in touch. We have a gifting document that we send people, uh, that explains the do's and don'ts of gifting and very, very, very important. Don't take your cell phone with you. And if you do turn it off and don't use GPS and to find where you're going, figure it out ahead of time. You don't want to be tracked when you're doing this. Airplane mode is not good enough. No. Turn it off. If you it's need, it's very if, simple. Turn the phone off. If you need to I'll know the time, I'll say it a third time. Off. Right. If you need, <laughs> to, need to know to the time, time, do you need to know the time? Get a watch. Okay. Do you need to know where you're going? Get a Thomas guide. I love the Thomas guide. I'm a lady of the '90s. I remember a day before GPS. I remember a day before cell phones and. The Thomas Guide is not relaying information back to the NSA. I guarantee you. I, I don't think it is. Well, it does have that metal coil on the back of it. Yeah. So. But I, I definitely uh, <laughs> would recommend Organite gifting. Um, it's a very rewarding. And like I said, if you want to know how to make them, I, I explain that on my site. And if you want to make Tower Busters, I didn't put up a video for that specifically. I would just, for that, just substitute a cheap resin it doesn't matter what it looks like. You can use Bondo and yeah. use aluminum shavings. And I will say Ken Rolla says not to use aluminum, but I have to say I've had great results with it. So I've had people ask me about that. This, it, and Ken knows our stuff works, but he also <laughs> says it could work better. However, in order to make it work like super strong, it costs a lot, a lot of money. So what we do is we make them cheap and strong and believe me, they're strong. Yep. And so we talked about this actually, Ken and I, a little bit at 5D. He knows our stuff works. He doesn't prefer aluminum. However, we found it works great. George Richel uses it as well, and he's created tons of rain and cleaned the skies in Africa. So I think what Ken's got going is he uses like super, super fine metals. So copper, you, I think. Yeah, and I use it too. We use, we use copper as well. Yeah, we try it. Um, we include that in everything. But Ken's stuff is very powerful, and he makes powered orgone devices. So if you're interested in Ken Rolla's work, I definitely would check out his site, freshandalive.com. I highly recommend his products, uh, his scalar energy products, as well as his detox supplements. Yes, and um, he has a vast wealth of information, scientific information about the functionality of these devices. And if you go to our website, which is thekembo.com, that's T H E C H E M B O W dot com, like a chemical rainbow. You can find links to some of the talks that he's done, as well as our Etsy page, where we offer these tactical tower busters now for uh, for a discounted rate for bulk for bulk purchases. And I do have to say, for uh, for us, the aluminum is working great. These things are creating scalar waves, are creating orgone energy, and We've seen the results, so I would definitely also check out the pictures of the cool stuff that happens in the sky. Because a lot of people think everything up there is weird and crazy and scary, but it isn't. A lot of it is like victorious Us, and beautiful. Yeah, victory over them. And, you know, they 
there we've experienced some uh, pretty severe reactions from them to uh <laughs> to our victories in the sky and just in general in life so uh yeah we'll we'll take uh we'll take some time to talk about that because anyone who does work with organite and indeed free energy at all is going to feel the wrath of the parasites in in some capacity <laughs> Well, we're talking about uh, not just, you know, a lot of people who work in free energy get killed for it. Yes. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something a little more subtle because we're not uh, we're not putting the uh, electric company at risk here. And we're not putting the uh, petroleum Yet. companies at <laughs> risk here. Well, we, we don't work in electricity. So the energy we're using is a free energy, which is a healing energy, which can be used uh, to help with illnesses. Wilhelm Reich used it in cancer treatment. It can be used to clean the atmosphere. So it has so many applications. But we don't really uh, pose a risk to the power company, and we don't pose a risk to the oil companies. But what we do pose a risk to is the parasitic order that rules our world. And if you think that President Obama is ruling the United States, uh, I'm sorry. You are but, absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, well, Anyway, as, as Obama likes to say over and over again, thank you, Satan. That That's a whole other story. Right. That's yes, we can backwards, guys. Anyway, so if you think Obama is ruling this world he's, or our country is not, the real rulers are above the government. And a lot of people know that already. You know, they talk about the 12 banking families. And, and I know that there's something above that. We're ruled by parasites. Well, we're not really ruled by them. They, they trick us into being ruled by deception. Them. It so, is ruled by deception. Right. And uh, Jim Mars called it ruled by secrecy. It is secrecy and it's deception. And that's something to keep in mind here. So when you're doing this work, what you're literally doing is you're not only taking down a $5 billion a year weather modification program. You're taking down a frequency fence. You are liberating humanity. And when human beings see that they can remove chemtrail from the sky, you can't believe what that does to your consciousness level. You, you become- Words cannot do it justice. It is only something you can experience. That's why, and yes, we are so appreciative to anyone who donates to our cause and helps to fund our gifting operation. But we always tell people there is nothing, nothing in the world like making your own organite pieces and gifting them in, can I use the N word, nature? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if the city is nature, I mean, we've gifted loads of organites to the city of Los Angeles, San Bernardino, uh, Riverside, El Centro, California, and everywhere between El Centro and LA and everywhere between LA and Redding. Mm -hmm. uh, and our next big one is to go in depth in Bakersfield, which we've already done a bunch in Bakersfield, but uh, we have some pretty cool pictures from there too we went up there uh in march and we left some organites and uh was pretty amazing uh results in the sky the what i want to talk about though particularly is for whoever is getting involved in organite gifting don't expect it to just be an easy ride it is a lot of fun it's very rewarding but the parasites do not like what you're doing. So when you expel parasites from your body, like intestinal parasites, they're not pleased with that. So you use a zapper to kill them. The zapper is an invention by Hulda Clark and uh, Don Croft makes them. And uh, Andy, Andy, Andy yeah. of uh, ctbusters.com. Right. So you could kill parasites. And believe me, they're not happy when you do that. And there are parasites outside of us as well. And Laura Eisenhower is a great source of information on, on these false rulers. They are destroying our world. Oh, and Cameron Day, too. They're destroying our world just for the sake of destruction. They are just horribly jealous of humanity for the gifts that we have. We have an emotional, uh, we have a diverse array of emotions beyond what many species in the universe have. We are very compassionate, loving, intuitive, and ultimately we're very cooperative. So a lot of what's going on in the world with war and greed, it has nothing really to do with humanity, but it has everything to do with mind control people and the uh, false, false power structure. And what we found in doing this work is that those people will come out of the woodwork and you won't believe how the parasites will try to hit you with energy in order to torment you. And I believe me, I've been mm -hmm. tortured and we'll talk a little bit more about this an hour too, because yeah. I had some pretty bad health problems associated with 
uh, mind control and uh, dangerous energies directed at me. So I've, I've dealt with it and I know many others have, and you'll also deal with mind controlled people coming in and trying to infiltrate the work. Oh yeah. It will happen to you. And you know, we get, we get emails from people all the time that say, is, is there any, any place that I can join that's like, that's doing this in mass? Are there any people that I can connect with that are doing this? Or are there any groups that I can join? But we always remind people that this is an unorganized network of people and it's best to remain that way. No, not for antisocial reasons, but because the chances of having this network infiltrated, like Sharon said, and sabotaged are very, very slim when there's that lack of organization. So it actually works. It's a benefit to people. But yeah, if you're going out to Gift Organite, be prepared to, to be targeted you, you won't be shot at or anything, but you'll you'll be prepared to have your your energy and focus be diverted, be prepared for distractions of any kind. You, you will you, there will, there could perhaps be specific targetings to you of of energies, bad energies that are designed to throw you off and to prevent you from doing this wonderful gifting work. Strange things happen when you're gifting. So Gabe and I were both in Compton on bike in the middle of nowhere and we were fighting and really didn't even know why. We just couldn't, okay, we were just we just couldn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> there was like no reason. And this happened over and over again. We would find ourselves fighting while gifting. And then we look A at each other. A couple of Jews then... on bikes arguing in Compton. What's there to see here? Yeah, right. Well, Okay, well, I'll get to that later, but we did get we did get harassed by police officers in Lakewood uh, while gifting. We mm -hmm. were literally under a tower when it happened. So that can happen. But uh, as far as the psychic stuff goes, we were on bike arguing for no reason. And then we both literally both of us got flat tires. Gabe, then me, both at the same time. I hear the hissing of the tire. I'm like, I can't believe it. We're in Compton. We're not even near a bus line. We're not near the blue line. How are we going to get back to Hollywood? It was horrible. <laughs> anyway, we had to stop arguing. We had to walk our bikes to the blue line. It took about a half hour. And I said to Gabe, all right, it's time we learn to fix a flat ourselves. We're taking the train right to Hollywood and right to the bike co-op, and we're going to learn to fix a flat. <laughs> that's right. So that's how we spent the rest of our day was at this wonderful bicycle co-op up in Hollywood called the Bicycle Kitchen. So I definitely recommend that if you're going to be doing this on bike, that you're prepared for this stuff. And Virgil and Fountain. Virg Virgil and Fountain, right. Okay, so we went up to Sunset Vermont Station and then walked down with our bikes to the Bicycle Kitchen, learned to fix a flat. They charged $7 an hour, suggested donation for their time. They're wonderful people. Yeah. Anyway, that will happen. And... Over time, we learned, and especially from our gifting friend, Harold, uh, who is an amazing energy worker, healer, and organite gifter, he gave us the beautiful gift of two sucker punches, which is a device available at ctbusters.com. The sucker punch is an anti-surveillance device. Uh, Gabe, you explain it better than I do. Yeah, it consists of a basically a quartz crystal, just a big ter single terminated quartz crystal wrapped in what's called a Mobius coil, which is just an intricate design with, with a piece of wire. And that is attached to a compartment, just a little cavity that's holding a nine volt battery. And when you flip the switch, it turns that DC current on and it's pulsing at the Schumann resonance. I don't know exactly the technology behind it. I think I, I should ask Harold for a little bit more specific. We'll get him on the show. Yeah, more specific idea of that, the actual functioning of the device itself. But when this device is on, inexplicably, it just, it creates like a sort of a psychic white noise. And it just, it hides you from from the the evil psychics that are trying to pinpoint you and and read your intentions and it just it cloaks you more or less i i can't think of any other way to describe it ever since we started gifting with the sucker punches on we've had a much better time we used to get uh trailed by cessna planes helicopters it was totally stressful and when we started using the sucker punch the stress vanished 
you know, and we didn't have that tracking anymore. However, we did have a really, really bizarre incident in Central California uh, back in the summer of 2015. We were driving down uh, on the five freeway coming back to LA and in Central California, it was north of Bakersfield, south of Fresno, middle of nowhere. Well, Bakersfield is off the 99. This oh, was oh, this me. was on the, five, on the five, somewhere around, I don't know, Button Willow or Lost Hills or one of those one of those weird cities that's just literally Don't in the middle. Don't call Button Willow of, of weird. Nowhere. Some people are from there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Anyway, we were gifting along the freeway, and Gabe was throwing because he's a better thrower. And I was so exhausted, I was falling asleep at the wheel. So I finally asked Gabe if he would drive, and I'll just try to throw. And uh, Gabe showed me how to throw, and I do okay at it. It was pitch dark, so we didn't know where the towers were. So we were using our intuition at this point. And it actually worked because I threw one intuitively. And sure enough, as soon as I threw it, we saw three towers clustered right, together. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd thrown a couple of organites. And after two or three of these uh, tosses I did, I saw a light. We were in the right lane of the freeway going probably 75 miles yeah, an hour. Speed limit. And there was a light in the field next to me. And I Pacing saw, us. And I saw this light approaching and i was confused because it wasn't the road it was the field it was and, like a spotlight just just pacing us and we were driving along and i saw this light getting closer and closer and closer and i looked and coming up next to the car was a craft it looked like a helicopter but it made no sound it was black and shiny with black tinted windows i couldn't see who was in it it went up next to the car it was flying a few feet off the ground in the field, flew next to the car. I couldn't get a picture of it. This all happened so fast. I couldn't see who was in there. And then within 10 seconds, this vehicle just did a 90 degree turn and a lightning speed just disappeared over the field. I just zipped out there. It was gone. And I'll never know what this was. <laughs> I'll never know if it was UFO alien activity or if it was U.S. government, I'll never know. But I've never seen anything like it. So apparently the sucker punch didn't help with that one. But we've seen... Other than that, it's been 100%. Yeah, well, we've seen some crazy things out there while gifting. But yeah, nothing further happened after that. It was just this remote little area <laughs> out, out in the middle of nowhere on the 5, near Buttonwillow. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. So I definitely would say uh, if you're going to be gifting, you're probably not going to experience necessarily the same amount of insanity that we have because we've done it on such a massive scale. However, you will see some of this. And also in your life, you may encounter mind-controlled individuals coming in and trying to infiltrate. Uh, we invited someone over because he was an organite maker and we were thrown off guard by him. And he's in the healing profession, an organite maker. We thought everything was fine. And he came into our home and we thought we were just going to have a nice time, have some snacks and talk about organite. Eh, and this guy immediately started scaring me about, he was telling me how it was so risky that I quit my job to do this. He started telling us about horrible things that happened to him, like people with guns in his hometown in Haiti. And it was like, what? Why trying he... to get us to argue with each other. And he stuff. literally tried to get us to argue with each other. And at this point, I said to him, all right, enough's enough. And he he got really tripped out by all that, yeah. too. I, he I... left on his own volition. That, well, was, that was very... I was very upset after he tried to get us to argue with, with each other. I just left the room. And I said, you know what? I need some space. I'm just going to go away for a while. Then he left. But you will get people in your home. This guy was clearly mind controlled. And he was even talking about having been mind controlled in mm -hmm. the past. And I didn't understand why such a negative creep came into my house. <laughs> and, and it was because he was mind controlled. He was susceptible. And he wanted to try to scare me out of doing the work. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, we're not trying to scare anyone out there from, from right, doing right. this work weird it's just more a word of warning than yeah. anything else to just have your guard up you know i'm not saying be paranoid but just use your discernment that's we'll, we'll say this a thousand times on the show there's no substitute for personal discernment well yes and i would say that having heard this from us that should help you to not have to go through what we went through and that's the reason i talked about it not to scare you that's right anyhow 
if you go to our website, thekembo.com, you can see the next event that we're going to be doing, which is, I believe, May 22nd, the New Earth Expo down at uh, Lake Balboa in Los Angeles. Uh, we have details about that. We have links to our blog and our photos as well on our website, thekembo.com. We will be back an hour or two. Thank you for listening to The Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. Be as generous with us as we've been with you. Click on the donate banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com or volunteer by emailing AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Vaccine, psychotropic drugs, and artillery batteries not included. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to The Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. Thank you so much for listening. This is our very special two-year anniversary of Organite Making episode with Team Kembo. So we are just so excited at the changes we've seen in this world since we started gifting Organite. And I know so many others are doing this work. If you want to know more about what we do, please check out our website, thekembo.com. That's T H E C H E M. B-O-W.com. And if you would like to support our work, we would greatly appreciate it. And we thank you profusely. Our website has a donate button. So you can go ahead and donate to us and or send us a check if you want to help us with our gifting efforts. And you can also purchase Organite for your home and for your community. All of our funds go to this gifting movement. And we've received so many contributions from so many different people. It's absolutely wonderful to see the world waking up and discovering Oregon energy and the power that it brings, not just to each person individually, but to help their environment and really the entire world. So please check out the site, learn more about Oregon energy, and you can also learn to make your own Organite and learn how to apply this in your own life to clean up your world, clean up your home. So we have just gotten back from the 5D event in LA and it was super amazing. Oh yeah, it was wonderful. And we've been to three 5D events now and it's it's also known as the New Humanity Conference. But this one now, they're calling it 5D. And because we're getting out of the 3D, that's what we're doing. We're going into higher ways of thinking. So we had a great time. I did a talk about orgone energy. And specifically, I was talking about the orgone energy cover-up and how this energy helps us in our lives, why it's been covered up, and what happens when you actually access it. So I'm going to get this talk online as soon as I can. I have to get a copy of it, and then I'll, I'll get it online, which I finally learned how to do. And uh, we also were talking about geoengineering and chemtrails. And, and really, realistically, the geoengineering is not covered up. It's in plain sight. We could see it. The no pun intended. No, the, 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 uh, yeah, exactly. The documents are available online. What the real cover up there is how to stop geoengineering. And that's what the focus was. And that's what our life focus is. So we had a great talk. We had our booth and many people visited and picked up Organite for their homes and their communities. We met Michael Murphy, which oh, was yeah. awesome and uh, very influenced by his work, his films, What in the World Are They Spraying and Why in the World Are They Spraying? That's right. That was very big to meet him. And Considering what happened with our meeting with Dane Wigington, we were <laughs> we were a little apprehensive, but he turned out to be a wonderful person, and the interaction was very positive. He's a very sweet guy and very sincere. Uh, he doesn't really know much about orgone energy, and I've always, ever since discovering orgone, I've been very 
skeptical of people who don't know about it, wondering how can you know about geoengineering but not know about orgone? Because these are two sides of the same coin. Yeah, especially for how long some of them have been immersed in this work. But, you know, some people just don't know. And he's a filmmaker and a very mm. good one. And I think his his object here was to educate people about the chemtrail spring. And I got that from him. You know, I got a sincere interaction with him. I felt that he was a good person I could tell. And he accepted a piece of organite from me as a gift. And I took him outside. He actually went outside with me to look at the sky and talk about the sky, which was amazing. And then he and, said something very nice yeah, to Yeah, he said, can I please have another organite? So that was just lovely. And uh, at 5D... And he's thing, open to it. He is open to it. So we're in contact. I, I'm going to get him on the show. And I know he'll, he'll be into talking with us about it because he, he's known about this longer than I have. So he he's one of the experts in the field. And I also experienced something very amazing at 5D, which was healing. So when American Freedom Radio went off the air due to a, a equipment problem... This was exactly when my equipment went out too. Yeah. <laughs> my voice literally went completely away. I literally couldn't talk. I've been having problems with my voice for 20 years, off and on. Terrible problems, sometimes worse than others. And you may, if you've heard some of my early videos on YouTube, they got me started in this whole thing. I was all scratchy and messed up. My, you could, I could barely talk. And then uh, it, it would get better for a while, and then it would get worse again. And I had a, a surgery on my vocal cords a year and a half ago. And after that surgery, it was amazing for six months. And then it got horrible again. So I, I've actually had terrible problems with my voice, which is no good for someone in my field. And especially because I also used to be a singer. And now finally, I'm going to be able to sing again because at 5D, I received some healing from a variety of people that actually brought my voice back. And I'm I'm so grateful. This all started, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say who did it because these are talented people, and you can look them up, and you can get healings from them as well. I was very I was having a lot of trouble speaking even from day one, and Holly Cook, who is one of the event organizers and has spoken on many panels for 5D, is a very talented healer. So you can check out Holly Cook's work. Uh, just look her up online. She gave me my first treatment at 5D, and. She did some work with me that got to the roots of the problem. That's how we started because what was interesting is the lady who did the surgery on me was a very talented doctor and she removed a cyst from my vocal cord and I don't think that's an easy thing to do, but she was a medical doctor trained in the medical profession and doesn't really delve into the reasons behind why you have the problem. They just remove the symptom Yes, and she did a great job and I'm, very grateful to my doctor for doing this, but the problem came back and I was convinced the cyst grew back. I was convinced something was wrong in there. So my first healing at 5D came from Holly Cook and she took me to her table and did energy work on me with crystals. But a lot of the work is about going inside to your memories and figuring out the roots of where this began. and Figuring out what's causing the energy disturbances and and just getting to the root of that stuff, right? Right. And what all of the healers, and I was, I was healed by several people. That's why I'm in such great shape now. <laughs> what all the healers determined was that this was an energetic problem, not a physical problem. And Holly found that my throat chakra was not in balance. She found everything else was pretty well in balance. She found an issue in my uh, fifth Fifth, first, I'm sorry, first chakra, bottom of the tailbone. Yeah. And in my throat chakra, I'm pretty new to the whole chakra thing. So you'll have to forgive me, but <laughs> this was very interesting to me, this healing. That's more of my wheelhouse than yours. All right. So you can help with that. <laughs> so she, she helped me get into some really early childhood memories and really, really difficult stuff, really sad stuff, you know, and I, I'm not going to get into my, my sob story. You know, we've all had terrible childhoods and abuse and all these things. But I got into the the root of the beginnings of not being heard, not being listened to. And we were able to, Holly, what Holly did was she helped me help myself, mm -hmm. which was really nice. So I was able to bring that inner, inner child, you know, that little baby into my heart and nurture the baby Sharon that was neglected and had these problems. And it was very emotional to me and made me want to cry. And I 
I tried not to cry, but now I'm not crying because I feel like I've processed it. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank Holly for, for her work. And then a very nice lady named Bren who uh, got some organite from us also offered me healing and she was very intuitive as well. And I'm very thankful to Bren. She helped me also to get to the root of some past life disturbances that were causing this energy disruption and reasons why maybe in the past I found it that I couldn't talk that I had to stay silent. So this was affecting my throat chakra. So uh, that was an amazing addition. And also, I've got a lot of people to thank because there were many healers that came to my aid. Carmen Croitoru, who gave me the healing, uh, she she has made healing oils for me. She has a website called Brain and Body in Balance. Definitely check out Brain and Body in Balance. Essential oils, balms, and zappers. She also sells sale. zappers. Carmen is great. She really understands the stuff, and she made a throat spray for me uh, called I Can Speak Spray, which has helped me a lot. So she gave that to me at the event. We did a little trade for Organite, which was awesome. And I want to thank uh, Harold Lunt, who is Carmen's life partner and our friend in gifting. Harold bought me this beautiful kyanite necklace and the color blue is associated with the throat chakra. That's right. So that also helped tremendously. And on the very last day, I had no voice anymore. I was supposed to be on the closing panel and I couldn't do it. And Ken Rolla helped me with a healing concoction. And I wish I could remember what it was. Ken was amazing. I think it was, that. it wasn't colloidal silver, but it was something, something similar to that. Well, I drank it slowly the way he told me to, to run down my throat slowly to heal the, the pain in my throat. So Ken helped me. And then at the closing panel, I couldn't talk. I couldn't participate. So I had to just sit in the audience and Aurora Buchanan, who was one of the healers there, you know, I was standing next to her, the final circle that we made. And I, I had mentioned to somebody about not being able to talk. She just reached out, grabbed my throat and started doing a healing session. And right when there. a lady just wraps her hand around your throat, you let her do what she wants. Right? So Aurora did some amazing work on me and she showed me that it was indeed energetic. So that's what I learned from Aurora was after she did it for a moment, I could talk Then I couldn't again, but it showed me that it was energetic in nature. And finally, Ambika Talwar at the very end came up to me and she's going to be on our show too. She says she's not ready. She wants to get her website in order. And she's a brilliant healer and an amazing poet. And let me tell you, I usually don't like poetry very much. Her poetry was unbelievable. She read it at the, the panel at the end. She blew my mind. So she came up to me at the end and she she finalized the whole thing. She literally got to the root of the problem. It wasn't just in the throat. It was associated with another health issue and another emotional issue I had had in the past. She brought it all together for me. And after this, I took over a week of vocal silence and the show was off the air. So while American Freedom Radio was regrouping, I was regrouping. And as like a miracle yesterday, my voice came back completely normal. I haven't had a normal voice in months and months. So I got to tell you, the 5D event was amazing. And I those are all the people. And that, it was a nice birthday gift to me, too. <laughs> well, Gabe's birthday is next week. Sunday. Yep. The, uh, can I say your age? Oh, you've already you've already disclosed that. If, if you must. I, I will have outlived Schubert in a couple months, so you may as well. Just the big 3-1. <laughs> 31. I made ripple. it, finally. 31 flavors. 13 flavors. backwards for any of you people with uh, Triskaidekaphobia out there. Anyway, so I just wanted to mention there were so many beautiful people at the 5D event, and I had a great time. It was very harmonious. The previous 5D had been crazy, I have to tell you, crazy energy, cacophonous energy, uh, yeah. and conflicts and weirdness. I think that the human race is going through different phases, and that was just something that we were getting through at that point. Yeah, whenever there's going to be an ascension of any kind, when when people are going to jump up a level, there's always an an obstruction to that. There's always an obstacle that must be overcome. And sometimes it's it's a very daunting one. And sometimes it's more than just one. But you get through it, you get past it, and you can see the results for yourself that you're just so much better off once you have ascended to that next level. And and it's an ongoing 
process. You know, there's there's no cessation to, you know, I've done all I can now, now I can rest. It, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it never ends. It's, it's always, it is an ongoing adventure. And uh, I, I wish my dad would get that through his head. But, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then parental issues are a huge thing that we're all dealing with. And oh, that's yeah. a lot of what was the roots of my problems was childhood problems and uh, neglect as a child. I'm sorry, mom. I didn't mean to say this on the air, but <laughs> parents make mistakes. I forgive you. You know, young people have children and they don't always know what to do. I have forgiven my parents too. A but... lot of parents make mistakes and, you know, I don't know if we're ever ready to be parents, but I just hope my voice stays and doesn't go away again. I'm doing a lot of things. Uh, so Gabe and I recently started drinking distilled water. Oh, yeah. That was huge. Getting the metals out is huge for our health. And looking in that container when it's empty and seeing the white, crusty sediment at the bottom. That's gross. <laughs> and to think, <laughs> oh, my God, we were actually drinking this for how long? It's disgusting. <laughs> and right after 5D, I went to the dentist. I had an appointment that Monday after to get my two amalgam fillings removed amalgam is a nice word for mercury mm -hmm. they call it amalgam it's a combination of silver and mercury and good I, stuff to have in next to your nerves and well, your skull <laughs> you know gabe i haven't had a cavity in 18 years and when i was young this is when i first started paying for my own dental so i was about 22 years old and now you know my age which is 40 it was in, i'm not there's no secret there um but i was 22 at the time and I was paying for my own health care and I was paying for my own dental. And the, these were at the back of my mouth where you couldn't see them. And the dentist said, so it's $50 cheaper for these. And I thought, well, who cares? No one can see them. It doesn't matter if they're a weird color because I didn't know. So yeah. I got two mercury fillings at that time. I haven't had a filling since then. I finally got them taken out. And one of the things that's happened is I still have, I've had ringing in my ears for a while, uh, for the past year, I've had that. Uh, this data transfer sound in my right ear, it's still there, but way, way quieter. So I have to say, removing the metal, I think had an impact on quieting that sound in my ear. Well, removing the metals is is actually a far broader term than most people might think because there are so many different sources of these metals. There's, first of all, the vaccines. As soon as you're born these days, they're trying to pump you full of as many metals as possible yeah. to make you more conductive, of course. And then there's, there's all of the wireless devices that are interacting with that metal that's in your bloodstream. And then there's, there's the water. Yes, that's, that's a very big one. And, and I guess mercury fillings. I, I, I don't know if they even do that anymore. But uh, I don't know if they do it anymore. But but the point is, there are many different sources of these metals. And the more of them that you get out of your lives, the better off you will be. Well, the chemtrails are a huge source. But of course, when we use orgone energy, it creates this upside down tornado effect of a scalar wave vortex. So that stuff's thrown away from the earth. So that's, you know, something we've we've mitigated. But then, of course, you do need to detox. And again, I recommend Ken Rolla's site, freshandalive.com, for, for things that will take the metal out of your body. I'm really into the distilled water. I'm very excited by it. It doesn't cost that much. A distiller is a couple hundred dollars. And that seems like a lot, but it's cheaper than buying water. Mm -hmm. So it pays for itself after a short time. And you're getting everything out. It's not just lead and and mercury and arsenic, but it's fluoride too. It's chlorine if you have the uh, the little carbon filters that go in the spout. There's there's obviously different brands and different ways that they take care of that. But yeah, you're getting absolutely everything out. All of those inorganic minerals that don't help you, that are just collecting in you, those are gone. You're getting pure natural H2O, and that's exactly what we need. One of the, the people at 5D, Annalisa, she's one of the event organizers. She's a really nice speaker. I really enjoyed listening to her. She was one of the MCs, so she would lead some of the panels and uh, be an announcer. She said it very well. She said that we've been lied to and that's okay. You know, we shouldn't beat ourselves up that we've been lied to because now we're learning the truth and we're all healing. And that's what this is. It's a journey of healing. I call it my learning journey. Everything is just a part of the learning process. We've been lied to. We've been poisoned. We've been poisoned through the water, the air, the food, energies, and it's time to wake up. 
and not beat ourselves up about what's happened in the past. And also, we don't need to feel that we need to rush ourselves in our recovery. It's a step-by-step process. And that's what it comes down to. We remove the poisons from our lives and we stop accepting them. And some are more difficult than others because some are addictions. We get addicted to this stuff. People Mm -hmm. are addicted to McDonald's and they're addicted to junk food. Believe it or not, they're addicted to their cell phones and dangerous energies as well. And Ram Das even said in his book that that I'm reading about meditation is that if you try and move too fast, you're doing yourself a greater disservice than if you just moved a little slower and the process took a little longer. And you can tell, you know, you can't, (laughs) you can't fool yourself very long. You, You can tell when, when you're in a situation where you have to say to yourself, okay, this isn't working. I have to, I have to try a slightly different approach. And that's, that's definitely applies to our own individual awakening states too, because if you're moving too fast and trying to get too much stuff done, it's just going to be counterproductive in the end. You have to find a pace that works for you and a lifestyle that works for you. I think Ram Dass's addiction was ice cream. Have you got to that part yet? It's I have journey of awakening. I haven't, but now I'm thinking of chocolate chip cookie dough. <laughs> I, I don't know if that means anything. But <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's delicious. I mean, it means deliciousness. And I, I mean, I wouldn't eat it out of a tube because there's a lot of toxins in there. Yeah. But, but I guess another thing that is really important to remember is this is an individual journey. And if you're frustrated because your family, your husband, your wife, your friends, they don't get it and they're still stuck in the matrix, it's really, really hard sometimes to accept that this is a this is an individual journey. One by one, we escape the matrix. One by one, we figure it out. And let me tell you, I know people who know so much and are so evolved, yet they're still addicted to their iPhones. Mm -hmm. It's just one step at a time. And and I know that as I say this, those iPhone addicted people are going to be like, what's wrong with the iPhone? Oh, I'm not addicted. I actually got some recognition of that from somebody who I, I wasn't pushing on the issue. But she did acknowledge that wow, I do use this thing quite a bit. And it was not because I pushed her. It's because I live by example and don't use one. Mm -hmm. It's because I have a a, sort of a dumb phone I carry with me with a pay by the minute plan that I use in emergencies when traveling. And that's it. So it's a live by example thing. It's, It's not about forcing people into it. It's not about hammering your relatives over the head with it. I wish I could help everyone. I wish, but I can't. It doesn't work that way. Some people are just not at that stage yet. And sometimes you just have to let go and let people figure things out on their own timetable. The world does not need to be woken up. I think this was, I'm quoting directly from uh, Esoteric Agenda, the documentary. There's no race to inform the 7 billion people in the world of, of this message or whatever's going on that you think is so important. It's just things need to happen at their own rate and part and that acceptance is absolutely crucial because if you don't have it it'll just drive you further and further into the state of complete madness acceptance is huge you have to accept and when you learn to accept you become a lot happier so when you look at the sky you've got your organites out there and you've got your chem buster and you still see the chemtrail and you get so angry because you still see a chemtrail accept it because parasites are insane and psychopathic and they're not going to stop spraying instead of ever yeah instead of getting upset about it just enjoy watching that chemtrail corkscrew and break apart and think about how much money they're wasting and then maybe you'll feel a little better and watch the organite do its work and then watch them try again to do it and watch them fail again and a third time and a fourth time and so on and so forth. Well, here in the mountains of the grapevine, it's particularly entertaining because we're living on the edge of the San Joaquin Valley, the most bombarded part of the state for DOR and chemtrails because that's the farming area. So of course- And DOR is death energy, by the way. Yeah, deadly orgone radiation, which is Wilhelm Reich's term for it. And it, it, it means what's coming out of cell towers, what's coming out of smart meters. It's the deadly stuff. Nuclear radiation as well. It's the deadly stuff. So we're on the edge of, of Central California. We're between LA 
and Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. and We're on the very southern edge of the valley, but in the mountains. Yeah. So we see over the mountain, we see the crisscrossing trails. We know what they're doing. And every day it's the same thing. There's this place they always crisscross there and they always crisscross on that side. And we know it. It happens every day without fail. And on some days, those trails stick and on some days they don't. But even on the days where they stick, they don't stick long because we have organite. Yes. And so the organite is always working. Always. It doesn't matter what the trails do or don't do. The stuff is always working. And that's very important for people to remember. So this is about acceptance. And we need to understand this is the situation we're in. If you want to put it this way, this is our karma as human beings right now. And once we accept this, we're able to change our lives, change your life, change yourself, change your world. That's how it works. So we were just coming off the, the 5D event. We had a wonderful time. There was a lot of beautiful healing energy. And I would have to say that most of the people at this event were very good and sincere people. Oh, yes, it definitely. It was beautiful. And one thing that Gabe and I both are very wary of is the New Age movement. Yep. And... There are lies in this movement as well, and that's all there to throw us off. So let's just be aware of that. And and uh, Gabe, you have some insights to offer about discerning the truth from the lie mm -hmm. and, and finding our way to healing and our way to health. Absolutely. And you said it yourself, Sharon, is that in in any facet of life, there's going to be truth and there's going to be lies. And... Again, it comes back to that quote that I say many, many times, there is no substitute for personal discernment. And this includes the New Age movement, which we like to call the New Cage movement, <laughs> because there's it, it seems to be especially prevalent sometimes. We, we really, because of the nature of of mysticism and healing, there's there's a lot of people that are out there to take advantage of others' trust and bank accounts, unfortunately. But uh, I will say that at this 5D event, the majority of these people were very helpful and were very kind and were they were very pure in their intentions. And you know, we're all we're all going through this life, and and some people are just in autopilot and they don't realize what their actions and words have how, how they impart into other people's you know as as don miguel ruiz calls it the dream of the planet is just how they're they're going through life and and just just their their life that they're living basically and uh yeah there were i'm not gonna mention any any names in particular but there were a few people at this event and it's inevitable that there's going to to be this element there were a few people that I could tell were anywhere from just slightly disingenuous to just full on con artists. And I don't like to use that term and, and I'm not, I'm not using this, this radio show as a platform for, for talking badly about people behind their backs or to their faces. I just have to put out the warning that you have to be discerning when you're around any group of people especially if your heart is in the right place and you want to help heal the planet and the people who live on it, you're going to encounter some resistance. You have to just trust your intuition. And mm -hmm. if you got a weird feeling about something, that that could be for a reason. But like like Gabe said, the people at this event were mostly like 100% you know, genuine. This does happen from time to time that because everybody wants – to be healed and everybody wants a better world they might believe just about anything so and again i might not even be right when i think somebody might not be 100 percent genuine maybe i'm misinterpreting but i just use my intuition and if i get a good feeling from someone i'll go with that and if i get a weird feeling i'll go with that there were a lot of genuine healers all those people i thanked for helping my throat they did things that that surgeon couldn't do. Mm -hmm. You cannot believe how much money this surgery cost. I had health <laughs> insurance at the time. So 
it was a few thousand dollars for me. When I looked at what the hospital was charging the insurance company, I was floored. This is to remove one little cyst off my vocal cord. And I know, and I was speaking with Ken, and Ken is one of the most genuine people I've ever met in my life. Ken Rolla uses science to explain this this stuff, but he understands the spiritual element and he's had alien contact and he's been a guest on our show. So you could check the archives and listen to our interview with Ken. He said, if this is an energy blockage that Ellen Stern, who we, we had met before could determine where it was. She does biofeedback, which is a process I'm not that familiar with yet, but I'm going to look more into, I don't even know if I'm going to need it now because (laughs) my voice came back. But he mentioned that if this is an energetic disturbance, you could pinpoint where it is. And then once she finds it there, I mean, she can do work on it. And then there's this other guy he knows whose name I I don't know, but he would tell me that can remove it. So it's fascinating that so much of our disease is caused by energy. And actually, Wilhelm Reich discovered this. So this is a lot of our work with Orgone because what Gabe and I do is planetary healing but what happens to planetary healers is we often neglect ourselves. That's right. And so I had to spend the whole last 10 days just nurturing myself and recovering, which is something I'm not used to doing. And typing and writing to me rather than talking. I couldn't talk <laughs> at all. So that is something I had to do. I had to recover. Um, what Reich discovered is that the root of illness is a lot of the time emotional. And he was trained in the hard sciences as well. He was a, a, a psychoanalyst, a biologist. He was finding the emotional reasons for illness. And, he, you know, he found that cancer patients would often have emotional problems. And in fact, that it was the compromising of our life force energy, our own orgone. This is in us. This is organized as a device that makes orgone energy, but this energy doesn't exist in a vacuum. This energy is part of us. It's part of the atmosphere. It permeates the entire universe. It is universal God consciousness. And he found that by increasing that life force energy, by having the patient sit in an orgone accumulator, which was a box that he created that would literally accumulate or going out of the atmosphere, you could increase the patient's life force and they would see see healing even from cancer. So his research was in curing cancer. That's where he was going with this before his life and his work were ended by the U.S. government. So we use the energy to heal ourselves and we use it to heal the atmosphere. But planetary healers like myself and Gabe, and this happened to Rainbow Thunderheart, he became very ill because he's put all his energy into healing the earth. So I had to take some time out for myself, which was totally weird. And I'm not used to doing it. <laughs> uh, Gabe helped me a lot during that time. Yeah, that's it's very, very easy to feel unproductive when you're just sitting around and healing. Like the feeling is I got to be doing something. But <laughs> sometimes we all just need to step out of the chaos for a while. And even if that even if that means just undertaking a simple meditation, anything to just just detach and remove yourself from the chaos, even for just a little bit, and be aware of your surroundings and be aware of your own heartbeat and be aware of the environment that you're in, the blue sky above you, and it is blue a lot of the time here, <laughs> and just have that awareness even if just, as I said, just for a little bit, and that it helps so much. Plus gratitude. Yes, that too. Gratitude helps. Saying a prayer, a blessing of, uh, you know, saying a prayer of thanks before you eat. It not only is good for your mind, it actually makes the food better. Mm -hmm. And I am just in total gratitude every day to be here in the mountains, in this cabin, which is my healing place with Gabe, and to have access to what we need and not have to spend a lot of money anymore like in LA. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Gratitude is very important. And speaking of gratitude, I would like to say for the record that uh, Don Croft, the originator of the Organite Gifting Movement, has brought many, many useful and wonderful things to the table. But... uh, (laughs) I have had uh, some issues with 
with him and and how he has run his website, his forum, and certain things that he says that I I feel obligated to say something because he is uh, he is very much in the mystical mindset. And one thing that infuriated Reich back in his day was dealing with the mystical population that just wants to explain everything away as fairies or as whatever the justification for something is that that may seem completely absurd. He he was dealing with that in his day and it infuriated him, the complete rejection and aban aban abandonment of science. And I, I fear that while Don has given a lot of valuable things, he is also saying things that are not true and he is he is keeping orgone energy he's keeping it obscure and and keeping it arcane and it's it's unfortunate but i have to say publicly that i i i can't recommend his his website to anyone because uh because of the things that uh, that are on there that i disagree with well, it's really, really a bummer. I'm I'm disappointed because I had recommended his site for a long time. And I'm gonna i I'm gonna tell you the site so you can look at it because there is information on there that's interesting. It's mm -hmm. etherecwarriors.com. I tried being a part of the forum, I tried doing it, but it's it's so obscure, it's so hard to read, it's so hard to navigate. I think it's a wonderful idea to have a forum for organite gifters, but I can't I can't get past the mysticism and the again, like Gabe said, this is something that really bothered Wilhelm Reich. Mm -hmm. We're talking about universal God consciousness, chi, prana. There is a spiritual element here. There is no doubt about that. But what we have to, to understand is the merging of science and spiritual thought. And what drives me crazy is when people explain things that I can explain scientifically. And there's pictures on my site on the Kembo.com under the photo gallery where I scientifically can explain what's happening. And of course there's people who are going to say that's a bunch of BS as well, but I'm just telling you what I know. I learned this from Wilhelm Reich from reading his books. And a lot of people say, where can I get information on orgone energy? Read Wilhelm Reich, forget the internet, read the books by the man who discovered this. You know, it's, it's more difficult than reading the internet or listening to YouTube but this is the best information. Mm -hmm. I learned it from him. I learned from Ken Rolla, an electrical the best, engineer. Bar none. Yeah. So you got to know. Uh, you got to know the science. And when people are explaining the corkscrew clouds and saying that these are angels called sylphs, and I'm bringing up that I hate that word, but I'm saying it. It's so much BS. I'm just. I am infuriated by it. I can't get past it. If my standpoint on this is. If you want to believe in air spirits that are eating the chemtrails, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Keep it to yourself. That's your prerogative. <laughs> but the 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 absolute the, the absolute rejection of scientific explanations for these things is that is unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. And and the the flagrant use of the the word disinformation is something that I can't get past either. Well, he because, called me disinformation. Yeah. So and he called Ken disinformation. And this is it's it's really disappointing me because he Don has done amazing work. Mm -hmm. And he's done great things. So I am not saying he hasn't done great things. I'm saying I'm really peeved that he's pointing the disinfo finger at me and Ken. And so many other people, Organite Austin. And Organite Austin. <sighs> Dwayne Gardner, by the way, is one of the premier sources for information. We're trying to get in touch with him to get him on our show. And we cannot. Dwayne, if you're out there, email Dwayne us, Gardner, please. please. Oh, and if anybody out there knows how to get a hold of Organite Austin, Mr. Dwayne Gardner, please, please, please tell him to email us because he is one of my greatest teachers. And I would put him up there with ken rolla and with wilhelm reich himself mm -hmm. dewind actually well he wrote the book the science of rain i highly recommend this and to call this disinfo is insane because he he and ken and wilhelm reich all acknowledge the spiritual element 
what is my greatest fascination is the merging of science and spirituality. Mm -hmm. This is where we are right now. And this is why the human race is going so far in development is because we've finally been able to merge these two ideas. And it's almost equally fascinating to see the, the degree to which the, the scientific side objects to the merging of the spirituality and the degree to which the spiritual side objects to the inclusion of the scientific aspect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you've got to have that happy medium. And Reich said that functionalism was that happy medium between mysticism and mechanistic thinking, exactly. as he called it. Exactly. So I actually don't even try anymore with people who are in that mechanistic thinking that can completely talk themselves into believing that chemtrails don't exist and that vaccines are safe and that no, the fluoride is not what's causing 75% of people to have thyroid problems. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't even bother anymore, but I feel that the people who are on the mystical side actually have more of a chance of understanding if they could embrace science. Mm -hmm. And I, but part of why I'm bringing this up is that I am now making the declaration that I cannot bother with that side too, because it's it's just as counterproductive to me. And you know, I I've tried to bring up to Don devices like the Obelix, and he has roundly rejected them. And I can only I can only deduce that it's because it's a device that he has not invented, and he doesn't want people talking about devices unless he either invented or popularized them. And that's that's completely unacceptable in my eyes because this this body of work that Sharon and I are so passionate about is not about ego games, not at all, not in the least. It is about helping this planet and ending the parasitic tyranny that has been choking the life out of it for the last 25,000 years at minimum. And that's what this is about. And I don't doubt that Don has good intentions. I'm not trying to start a smear campaign here by any stretch. I am just telling people to be wary of the, the debunkers on one side and the fairy people on the other. And again, use your own discernment. That's a Don Croft line that I'm using. By actually, the way. I really, really love his work. Use your own discernment. Yeah, this is really tough for me because I actually do really love his work and mm -hmm. I like his book. I read his book, The Life Etheric. It's very, very interesting stuff. I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that he is pointing the disinfo finger at everyone. The behavior is it's, just it's driving it's, me crazy. And and I I think the last straw for me was when I I went onto the forum, which I don't do very often, and. And someone had posted about gifting in Southern California, specifically the Lake Elsinore area, which is a little bit south of where Sharon and I lived when we were still in L.A. And uh, and he responded to this nice lady saying something about how he wasn't even aware that Southern California had become green and lush again until she mentioned it. But when we in, posted pictures of when it. When in reality, <laughs> well, I had I had mentioned it numerous times. And you posted him. photos. Posted photos and it, it was, it's it's really maddening. Yes, posted tons and tons of photos, and this is another strange thing. I've never seen a single photo of Don. That's bothering me too. And I Why no photos? I don't know. I don't Why know. Why no photographic evidence? That's what this is all about, compiling empirical well, evidence. Well, Gabriel, he's not scientific, so maybe that's why. Now, we take a scientific approach, and I'm not a scientist either, but I do daily photographs, and I post on my blog almost every day. I mean, I don't want to bore people by, you know, overposting, you know, but I, I post- Monday, blue sky. Blue sky Tuesday, blue sky. But I do post <laughs> almost every day, and- I keep records and we monitor satellite imagery and we do keep written accounts also. George Richel of Organized Africa also takes photographic evidence and he's presented brilliant talks. In fact, I also go to my site to listen to George Richel's talk at the uh, Global BEM, Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference, where he posts, uh, he has a slideshow 
and does a presentation on organite gifting, orgone energy, and has the exact same skies in Africa that we do here in California as a result of the work. It's fascinating to watch this transformation of the sky. So just to recap, I'm going to say it again. This is not a smear campaign. I am not trying to talk garbage about <clears throat> about people behind their backs. I'm just telling people that you have to be aware and use your own discernment because there's a lot of information out there. Some of it is true. Some of it is not. And there are many people out there who may seem that they have good intentions, but just look around at all the available evidence and use your own judgment. That's all that I ask. One other thing that uh, a lot of people that will contact me will ask me about who else is doing it? How can I get a group of people together? How can we organize? And I just, I don't understand so much the human beings need to get together and organize, but I'm maybe a bit of a loner compared to most people and I'm happy to work alone. I'm most happy to work with Gabriel and it's the two of us, and that's enough for me. And occasionally, uh, Harold will join us with gifting. And again, I hope to get him on the show one of these days. But one of the things that really, I, I need to dispel the myth that we need to gather a lot of people together in order to make a difference. Of course, having a lot of people together can make a big difference. But the general uh, consensus behind this is that people think they need to get together and petition their government, stop the chemtrails, make laws. Government is never going to help us. Govern means to control. And, and government means to control, control the, the mind. mind. That is literally what it means. I'm a voluntarist. My friend Adam Kokesh has a lot of great videos on this on YouTube. You can look up Adam Kokesh. He explains voluntarism. That's the way I live my life. That's what I believe. I do not think the government is here to help us. I think the government is a, a bunch of criminals that are here to help their corporate criminal friends to destroy the planet and take lots of money. And I don't think that that's how we're going to get anything done. So I do want to, to dispel that myth that we need to get together to do this. You on your own can make a huge difference. Through your own intentions, through your own work with Orgone, you can make a huge difference. So a lot of people are talking to me about lawyers and lawsuits and, you know, suing the government for the chemtrails. I got news for you. The government's not doing the chemtrails. And I got more news for you. Humans are not doing the chemtrails. This is the biggest cover-up in our history. And the cover-up isn't about geoengineering. The cover-up is ETs. For 25,000 years, our planet has been bombarded with dangerous energies from dark extraterrestrials that are controlling humanity that very well could have bred us by crossing us with an alien race and primates and that have suppressed most of our DNA to the point where science calls it junk DNA. We are activating that DNA now. And these parasites that have sucked off the life energy of our planet for 25,000 years are freaking out because we are getting past it now. I was hesitant to talk about ETs for a long time until I started to experience, I started to experience them myself. And I can't go as far as to say I've had contact and I feel completely like a total phony if I say I've had downloads. Okay. I can't say that because <laughs> I feel like, you know, uh, all right, now I'm one of these people that, that's had downloads. Okay. <laughs> I experience them on a daily basis. The sprayers are not human. I can tell you that because I can make them disappear. And so can Gabe. They will disappear with our thoughts we can wipe them out of the sky and the plane disappears too, not just the trail. Wilhelm Reich. The plane or facsimile thereof. The fake plane. <laughs> it's cloaked and it's an orb a lot of the time. And I, I have to say it. I'm coming out about it. I did this at my talk at 5D. And as soon as I get a copy of that talk, I'm going to put it online so everyone can see it. 
but we I, posted the one from last year, but we will get around to the one that we just did. Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, we had an uh, Ormond Energy panel back in September that we posted up online. I can tell you this. Uh, I've had the confirmation by reading Contact with Space by Wilhelm Reich. This is my favorite book. This is the book where he recorded all of his experiences with working with Orgone Energy, his cl uh, Cloudbuster device, out in the desert in Arizona to remove deadly energy from the atmosphere and bring back rain. He was literally fighting chemtrails back then, but he called it DOR, deadly orgone radiation. It came from these UFO craft, which was astounding to him as much as it is to us. And this is also about his experiences with reporting to this to the Air Force. So he reported on all this to the Air Force. All this is in the book, including the questionnaire from the Air Force where he detailed what he saw in the sky. They knew what was going on up there already. What he found was that in removing deadly energies to bring rain to these areas, first off, even before any rain was brought to the area, green grass started growing around him just through the removal of deadly orgone radiation. So even before any rain, green grass started growing in the desert. And what he also found was that after hours and hours and, and days and weeks and years of staring at the sky, he found that there were craft up there that he thought were stars and he'd aim his cloudbuster at them and the stars would fade out and retreat and move out of the sky. Then he realized these stars were actually alien craft, UFOs, orbs, which we've seen many of in California. At this point, Gabriel and I have seen more orbs than I can count, especially in Los Angeles. And also while we're making Organite, in LA particularly, they would hover over us. So we've seen them. We know they're there. I've seen them spraying. I've seen orb sprayers. Wilhelm Reich saw UFOs. And of course- In 1954, mind you. Exactly. And a corresponding deadly orgone radiation in the atmosphere. The look of chemtrails, of hazy, white, gray, flat skies in the deserts of Arizona accompanied by UFOs, which when he fought with his cloud buster, not only did the UFOs retreat, but the deadly orgone radiation- was dispelled and he brought rains as far as Los Angeles and Pasadena from Tucson, Arizona. This is huge, huge news. And he could see it. He realized that these ETs were actually sucking off the life energy of this planet. They've been doing so for 25,000 years. They feed off our fear. This is why our so-called government keeps us in fear. This is why the UN is trying to keep us under control. They aren't in charge. There's someone above them running the whole show, and many of the people in our government aren't even people. And I just have to put that out there. This is something that we've encountered in our work. We've seen things that are unexplainable. They're unexplainable from a, a mainstream standpoint. Some of the things that have followed us, that thing in the field in Central California, <laughs> yeah. that black shiny craft that made no noise and threw up no dust, but flew a few feet off the ground next to our car and then did a quick 90 degree turnover the field. And just zipped out of sight. There's no explaining these things. I mean, other than to just finally acknowledge that the human race has been manipulated for a long, long time. Far longer than we initially thought, in fact. These parasites are living off our life energy. They feed off our fear. They attach themselves to our lower chakras and suck off our energy. I've experienced them firsthand and I've had to repel them myself. And I must say, Oregon Energy is your greatest tool to doing this, but even with it, you're gonna have to do a lot of work yourself. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants the quick fix solution. Everyone wants the, please, if I put this out, the chemtrails will be gone forever and there'll be, there'll be no more ever, there'll be no more problems. It doesn't work like that. This is a personal journey for everyone. And when you start working with orgone energy devices of any kind, you will see what it does to your life right away. You will see what it does to your sleep. You'll see what it does to your neighborhood and your family. And if you live in an area with sources of deaf energy, cell phone towers, smart meters, and even in your own home, Wi-Fi routers, dimmer switches, CFL light bulbs, 
The sources are many in number, but the solution will always be one. Well, the solution is orgone energy and removing the death energy from our homes. And again, we have another great episode. Check the archives for Lloyd Burrell of electricsense.com and listen to what he has to say about the stuff in our houses. He doesn't talk about ETs. He talks about EMF, and that's it. Personal and responsibility is the key here. You can't worry about the rest of the world. Just take care of yourself first and your home, and then everything will come in due time. I hear people say stuff like, they're feeding us this, they're doing this to us. They are not doing anything to us. They are a bunch of powerless little parasites. They barely can even survive. They require human misery in order to eat. So these cut off their food source. Cut off their food source, according to Cameron Day, and the the, uh, the Gnostic way of thinking, which is very interesting to me. And again, that's another person I'd like to have on the show. Um, Cameron Day talks about them. Um, they are mercury-based artificial intelligence. And when I see those planes up there spraying chemtrails, there's not one part of me that thinks there's a human being in there. So you might think it's the Air Force. And you know what? If you don't believe in ETs, believe this. We're being poisoned. We're being poisoned with all of these things, chemtrails, fluoride, GMOs, and we're being poisoned because we take the poison. Mm -hmm. And when we say they're doing to us, they're not doing anything to us. We have woken up and we're no longer accepting the poison. I will not accept it in my house. There are no GMOs in my house. There's no fluoride in my water. And there's no CFL bulbs in the outlets. You can bet on that. Yes. <laughs> Don't accept the poison. Wake up, be free, and take it one day at a time. We're all waking up together one at a time. Absolutely. Please check out our website, thekembo.com, and check out the event we'll be doing on May 22nd, the New Earth Expo. We have our blog, we have our Etsy store, and we have our donate button. Thank you so much for listening to The Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. This is Chris Thank you.